What's up, guys? This is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long, and today I got another podcast of the Friendly Bear Podcast, and today we have guest John Burns, and John Burns is a mental performance coach of the Rethink Group. The Rethink Group is, uh, D- D- Denise Scholl is the head of the Rethink Group. She's, from what I understand, she founded it. She is the author of Market Mind Games, a really important book that uh, all traders should read, and uh, yeah, so I got in contact with, I was got in contact with Denise Scholl's team, and, uh, you know, I got, a, and especially, so they recommended John Burns, the mental performance coach. So like, I found it super interesting to have him on because with trading, there's a lot of mental, it's a mental performance based thing. So like, we're going to get deep and John Burns, John is a, is a professional in the field and has uh, a lot of experience and I'm willing, you know, is so willing to share his, his knowledge and information with us and uh, to help improve our trading regarding performance and mental performance so with all that being said what's up john how's it going it's going well it's going well yeah um i'm excited about it thank you for having me i'm looking forward to our conversation absolutely so john um okay so first let's get a background so how did you get started with the rethink group i know denise was a coach of yours and yeah how did you get started with that and what's your your background so my background is growing up Outside of Chicago, I saw the trading floor in the news for some good and some bad reasons, but um, it was on the news. It was there. Um, It looked exciting to me when I saw the trading floor, the trading pits. So I decided I wanted to try and get a job down there. And my senior year of high school, so I went down and and for the senior summer going into the college year, um, knocked on a bunch of doors, hiring freeze. I must have, you know, gone to every floor of the board of trade and the Merck, nothing. So that following year, I went to uh, college. And then uh, the next summer, I was able to get a a job at the Chicago Board of Trade in the grain floor as a runner. And so I remember I was in the soybean pit following another runner to, you know, who we bring the orders to. Soybean pit, when the market opened, ding, ding, ding. And I just got chills from all the activity, the frenetic activity. And I thought, this is what I want to do. So I ended up working summers at the Board of Trade, found out, found a trading prop trading group, and I traded feeder cattle options for about 17 years on the trading floor. Kind of at the end of that, I transitioned off the trading floor to trade discretionary mechanical um, systems and then ran an algorithm um, for a while as well as the trading trader arm trading input to the algo guy uh, he did all the math and programming um, and i kind of conceptualized some ideas for him to program and to kind of make the algorithm more realistic maybe is a good way to say it and so during that time about 2012 i think no 2010 maybe somewhere in there i met denise and so back up a little bit Around 2000, I started looking for mental skills, primarily to help my golf game. And so I read a lot of Bob Rotella's books, um, and I I was lucky enough to work with some great people, Mike Gervais. Um, I went to a seminar, a small group seminar with Bob Rotella, because my golf coach knew him, and uh, worked with a Navy SEAL named Kirk Cronin, and then found Denise. Um, And Denise was different because she, we think at the Rethink Group, and she came up with this idea that emotions are important, especially negative emotions. And all of the mental skills advice, trading and sports was, you shouldn't have emotion. You should be a robot, a computer. And that just doesn't work with how our mind works. And the research shows that, you know, our mind is always making predictions, And when we use our body and past uh, experiences to make the next prediction, that's better than shutting all of that out. So I came to Denise, worked with Denise off and on for about five years as as, um, client coach relationship. And then toward the end of that time, she said, you know, you'd be a pretty good coach if you wanted to do this. And that was about the time the floor trading was kind of winding down for me. Um, And I was mostly off the floor. And my experience was that on the floor, the more I traded, the better I did. Uh, Off the floor, that was not the same. 
for me. <laughs> so uh, the point in that is that I had more time to do coaching and work with Denise. And, and as part of that process, I, um, I've been working through a master's degree in modern psychoanalysis. And I've had the uh, honor and privilege of working with people since about 2016 as a coach for the Rethink Group and work with some amazing um, traders, professional athletes, um, you know, PMs, hedge fund managers, CIOs, uh, COOs, really interesting, fantastic people. So that's kind of, you know, a quick thumbnail sketch, maybe not too quick, but quick for me. <laughs> yeah, man, so many things there. As you're talking, you know, you were switching to algo trading and, and describing the human side of trading to the person making the quant guy making the algo so interesting we could have another podcast on that alone but um um so high performance you know mental performance and all this i'm always like fascinated by these topics like with trading because like i i like to study the the greats like in all in the sports for example like kobe bryant or tom brady or michael jordan um i know you mentioned uh, high performance with golf that's how you you know you when you got started with this. Um, so like, and I, I saw on your profile, it said, uh, you know, you, you help coach for high pressure decision-making situations. And like, I always um, refer to like, to, to when I'm talking about trading and stuff, it's like, I feel sometimes like I'm, I'm like a quarterback, like Tom Brady, and like, I'm getting blitzed and I have all this experience and knowledge and I got to make an instant decision. So like, what, you know how to how, so what do the greats have the, the 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 real professionals that like not even the greats just like at the high level people like NFL NBA those kind of people what do they have that's a, that's extra than like the recreational guy that's like you know you know what I mean um, yeah <clears throat> what, great se what separates them what separates them yeah yeah I think um I think the greats and and I'll add one other caveat to that so high pressure high consequence so. The high pressure, like for me, a high pressure environment is kind of the price of admission for anything that's worth doing, right? Pressure just comes with things that we want to do, whether that's whatever, playing golf or tennis or trading for a living. I think what the greats really do well is that they find the calm and the chaos. So when the chaos starts to happen, you know, it's this idea of time slowing down. It was always so interesting to me, the last, you know, 10, 15 seconds of the day on the trading floor, time could be, my perception of the time can be diff, could be different from day to day. And I, it was always interesting to me. Sometimes it was super fast when there was a lot of stuff going on. Sometimes it was super slow when there was a lot of stuff going on. And to me, the greats are really able to kind of focus and focus on the most important thing in a way that they're able to act and, and in a way they're able to see clarity in the chaos. And, and we at the Rethink Group believe with the Shawl Method that um, the way to do that is to understand what we feel and whatever that is, accepting of all of our feelings. And so to be nervous in a situation is normal. And you know, traditional advice oftentimes says, well, you know, you've been the, you've been in this situation a hundred times before. You shouldn't be nervous. Well, if you're nervous, you're nervous. There's a scene in Hoosiers that I really like when um, you're, you're a lot younger than I am. So maybe you haven't seen Hoosiers. But anyway, the, 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 these these kids from a small town were playing in a big city and the coach um, made this big deal about measuring how high the basket was and measuring the free throw line and saying, well, it's exactly the same as we play at home. So it should be no different. But at home, they played in front of 50 people. And in this situation, they're going to play in front of 2000, right? Different, different. The World Series is different than another day in another game in June. And to ignore that fact doesn't let us operate at the level we need to, right? So we have to enjoy and envelop and, and have all the feelings of the situation. It It's exciting, it's nerve wracking, and there's a lot of pressure. But if we can accept all that and say, yeah, well, 
that's all true. How do I feel within that? You know, I think that that's what opens the door to this kind of optimal level of performance. Now, optimal level of performance. So you mentioned uh, a, a little bit earlier about traders wanting to trade like a robot and ignore their emotions. And I've I've heard this a lot. Like, and it it always confused me early on in my career because I was like, should I trade like a robot? I don't understand. Like, you could have an algorithm do that, and like I always thought like I, I'm a discretionary trader I've always been and uh, I was confused about it and I think a lot of people are confused about that they think like trading like a robot is the way to go to be like uh there's a there's a, a popularity now with like systematic trading with uh mm -hmm. the retail traders trying they're, they're trying to hack the system <laughs> and uh you know what I mean and um yeah. but like when you mentioned like optimal performance I think like to gain to perform at your best uh you gotta like um consider the human side of it the human emotion the the mental side you know so what are, what are your thoughts on on that yeah there's a lot there that was a good description um so i think oh, how to unpack that the, i think the key is that we all have our individual footprint or fingerprint and it, to me initially i think there's a prog a progression and I think of it as the idea of in bowling where, you know, you have little kids at bowl and you put the things up so they can't get a gutter ball. Right. So I think in a trading system style, figuring out what your edge is, I think initially there needs to be a lot of structure in that. So we have guardrails, very specific rules, defined situations. And as we start to be able to adhere to that and what that really does is say, this is exactly what I'm doing. Being able to, to, I had a client yesterday actually say, you know, one thing that I remember, and I worked with him for over a year and a half. He said, one thing I'll remember is that the first time we met, you asked me to describe what I did to you. And I couldn't. And you really pressed me on that. And now I'm able to do that. And to me, that he's saying this to me, to him, this was one of the most important things. And I really think it is. Because once we define what we do, then everything outside of that, we don't do. And so I, I often see, and I've done it myself, of traders saying, well, you know, maybe I'll do this. It's close enough. And that's where we really get, traders really get into trouble. It's kind of this idea of, uh, I have an idea of a confidence cycle or uh, circle in my head. And, and we start out, where we're super conservative and nervous, and we have all these rules and we take only the really, 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 really perfect trades, whatever that means. And so we're, we don't take all of the trades in our sample set. We just take the best ones. And then we expand it to our sample set, which is what we, I believe what we should do. And then as that starts to go well, and we're making money and, and our account's growing, then there's this almost overconfidence that takes over. And we say, you know what? This is close enough. And I've really been doing well. And I think that often leads into that next step of, well, dang it, I lost on that last one. I need to do this one to make up for that one. And once we start to lose really what we're trying to do, that whatever our setup or confluence of events is, and we start thinking about money or lots of other things, it, it, it creates a situation where we start losing money. Our confidence goes down. We start to stop taking as many trades and then put a bunch of rules around things. And so that's kind of a, a, a lower level. Once we really are able to do what we can do and Van Tharp had this idea of, you know, 95% or something, when you can do your system 95% of the times, the time, meaning take your proper setups and don't take other setups, then you're kind of at the level of mastery. And I think that's probably a good guidepost. And then we start developing, you know, this um, edge of adding feeling contexts and, you know, working through our patterns of behavior and thoughts. Now, speaking about the, the patterns of behaviors and thoughts. Okay, so let's say a trader is is on point for a certain amount of time he's in the zone and it got the routine going uh 
is on a, a, a good streak and has mm -hmm. is, is not thinking about the doll the, the he's thinking about the money on correctly you know not thinking about the money or just has their mental game on focus and then all of a sudden thoughts start to creep in and then like some bad bad behaviors happened here mm -hmm. and there and he gets rewarded maybe a little bit and then he continues it and then it, it starts to snowball into something else and then like a, now uh like a a slump happens almost like in a sport when like a, a baseball player is doing well and then gets in a slump or something i remember mm -hmm. uh i don't know if you're familiar with baseball Maybe you yeah. are like the Yankees. There was a baseball player, Chuck Knobloch. Do you remember this guy? Sure, yeah, yeah. Second baseman, mm -hmm. very all-star second baseman for many years. And all of a sudden he couldn't throw to first base anymore. He could, he could, he could he just something he got the, some, some kind of jitters or something, something creeped in his yeah. head. He never, he was never able to recover from that. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that's one extreme example, but like with traders, you know, um, maybe they, they, the psychology or the mental side gets sidetracked and like mm -hmm. it leaks into the performance and then like how to get back on track with that, you know? So. Yeah. I, I, I wrote a blog post about the yips and baseball specifically. I use Steve Sachs as my example and I have worked with some baseball players um, as clients. So yeah, I, I understand that idea and in trading it's similar. And so what, what we, what we advise with the rethink group is going back to when the, when the slump started and really trying to focus in on what changed. And oftentimes another thing that we do at the rethink group is that when we have intense um, feelings, and I like to think of it as feelings that don't match the moment. So, you know, somebody bumps into us on the train, me on the train and I become very angry right? Like it's no big deal, but it really made me mad. Usually when that, when the emotion doesn't match the moment, it's about something in the past. And so when something, when a slump or, or an extreme situation happens, I think that it is a past experience being superimposed over the present moment. And that kind of stays kind of stuck until we can kind of have work out what that was. And so one way to do it is to go back and write, really journal about everything that can be remembered about that moment when things started to change. And as more, the, the more specific, the better. And, you know, in those extreme examples, it's, it's helpful to have a coach or somebody outside that's helping support you, but really writing out, being honest with yourself. Um, and the other thing that I'd like to say is that we can have all sorts of thoughts and feelings and emotions. Um, when they become a problem is when we start to act them out automatically. So I also think that within that moment of a, of a, a slump, our actions become automatic. And so it's harder to kind of figure out. And so really with that slump that starts to happen, we need to slow things down, really look at you know, what is really underneath the desire to trade a lot or that is, or that really the need to not trade, you know, those are kind of the couple of basic things with the slump um, and really trying to untangle what's going on is usually there's a conflict there. I see. Uh, so journaling and digging deep and figuring it out, uh, through like almost looking in the mirror deep down. So it's, it's like, are, are, so is the person, the trader looking back, to events outside of trading from the past, maybe from like years ago, and then like seeing if the behavior is 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 if that's the cause of the root cause of the behavior. Is that what, is that what you're saying? That could that could be um, yes. And so maybe a maybe a a very simplistic example is, you know, if 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 I had a a really bad day and my risk manager just tore into me. And that brought up a, an experience of the past when, you know, I made an error in baseball and my dad yelled at me and made me feel ashamed about that. Those two things could become linked. And then the shame from, you know, my dad embarrassing me or letting me letting him down, him letting me down becomes now this dynamic with 
the risk manager and with trading. And so it becomes very uh, confused and convoluted. And once we can start to understand that that's happening, um, and usually it helps to talk to somebody who is not defending you and saying, you just need to go in there and trade it up. You just need to do what, no, we need to, we need to be supported and listened to and understood. I think that's what really, that's what I do with my clients ideally is help them feel understood. I join their reality and let them be who they are. Wow. Excellent. That's, that's a, an example. I think uh, I'll, all the listeners can relate to, to some extent for sure as, as traders. Um, now um, with that, like let's say a trader is doing it on his own and does, has no clue what's happening <laughs> Yeah. instead of working with you or, or listening to this podcast and realizing, Oh, wait a second. That's why I'm behaving like that. Mm. Um, they're just going to go like, they got to figure it out for themselves. You know, it's like, it seems like trading is almost, necessary to have a coach if and you know because like if not it's just it's just so hard you know yeah. so so yeah so like um with the rethink group mm -hmm. what 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 uh makes it different i know denise show is is absolutely phenomenal with you know yeah. market mind games you know what i mean so like what what is, what separates rethink group from like other coaching or just you know even outside of trading like you know there's also all types of coaching you know what I mean? So like what, what is the, the rethink or the, the show method? Yeah. So the show method combines some is a novel combination of a lot of different things, but primarily it's the latest neuroscience on decision-making. And so what that is saying is a couple things. Like I said earlier, we're always predicting what we'll feel in the future based on memories of a similar experience from the past and feelings from our body. Our brain does that because our brain's primary job is to keep us alive and safe. And so those things are always working below the surface. Um, and so we also combine techniques from modern psychoanalysis to help our clients feel understood and validated. And also then there's a progression that we're able to help our clients work through. And part of it is meeting our clients where they are and um, creating a roadmap for them to kind of progress through. And oftentimes what that means is kind of a greater understanding. The client from yesterday, again, he said that he's able to see things from different perspectives and, and um, understand things in, in ways that he couldn't when we started working together. So, you know, it's again, it's using our experience, all of the, um, the coaches at the Rethink Group have experience trading and operating in high pressure, high consequence situations, whether it's both trading and sport. Uh, a couple of us, all of us actually, trading and sport are things that we've done at high levels. So that's what really separates us. And the Shell Method is, is kind of this new understanding of the brain. It's a new model, completely different than what we've been taught. And, you know, I think it's that's the revolutionary kind of um, next level type of thinking, because I've, like I said, I've, I've done all of this stuff. And, you know, Bob Rotella talks about focusing on a very small spot. Great, very helpful, useful, but it's not the whole story. The show method is the full story because it takes the environment and the individual and matches them together, right? Because you're gonna see the market differently than I am. Even if you tell me exactly what your trade is, I'll trade it differently. Yeah, and, so everyone, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, so so trading in sports, so like, you know, um, so trading is kind of like a sport, right? I mean, it's not physical. Sometimes it feels physical, but like, <laughs> as far as, um mental high performance like uh, how do, how does what is the relationship the most because i think a, a lot of traders don't realize that trading is is a sport you know in, in that regard where it's like a mental performance uh, i i always i mentioned the blitz uh the football blitz example mm -hmm. analogy but there's also like in baseball i always I say this one too it's like a baseball player 
a hitter, you know, you're facing a guy that throws 101 miles an hour. You got to decide in a split second whether it's a, t a curveball. And is that, does that curveball from the video you watch, it drops 12 inches? How many inches? What, does he have a slider? Is it going to go left, right? So many inches. Mm -hmm. And you have to decide immediately. And then that, like, you know, and all the major leaguers are highly skilled. What separates, like, yeah. a Hall of Famer, one that's been doing it for 10 years consistently, rather than the one that did it two years consistently in the majors, uh, which they both had stellar high school and college careers yeah, yeah. and had all the five-star skills. So it's just, it's just crazy. So like trading is kind of like that. You can almost make baseball cards or of the, of the <laughs> traders. And there's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Have the stats, but, uh, but yeah. yeah, what, what, what do you think is the correlation there that people can understand better? Well, I think first off, they're they're different right because trading is an infinite game and so what an infinite game is it is by definition it doesn't end so the primary goal in an infinite game is to be able to play the game tomorrow right and so all of us traders we need to make sure we don't blow out right that's the goal and you know it, it may not seem like it all the time i remember standing in trading pit and um a guy at my firm was stood over my right shoulder and we were talking and he was struggling. And he's like, I oh, mean, I don't, I don't know. I think they may cut me. And I said, I said, we are all three bad months away from being done. And so that's, that's a, a infinite game. A finite game is, you know, you know, the rules, the game's going to end. And so in a finite game, baseball, for example, you can kind of go for broke, right? You can guess fastball on the first pitch and just swing as hard as you can. And if he throws you the hook, yeah, you look silly, but that's a gamble you were willing to take. And it really doesn't hurt you because you're going to hit three out of 10 times. Whereas in trading, if you go for broke, you're in big trouble. I remember we were playing this game at a trading thing that I went to. And part of the game was, to, to win the game, you needed to bet all your money at some point. And I could never do that because you can't do that in trading. And so I think those are two. So that, that aside, I do think that, you know, using our minds effectively and using our bodies as information and using our intuitive feel that we get over time, to your point, baseball player, I've worked with baseball players, pitchers and hitters, and, um, you know, pitcher I worked with, he wanted to try to slow the game down. So for him, needed we, we came up with a strategy when, you know, somebody makes an error, umpire gives you a bad call, get your feet in the grass, take two deep breaths, get back on the mound and go. Um, and so, you know, the strategies and tactics can work in that regard. And usually it's what we come back to is feel what you feel and then See if there if it's if it's about something in the past that is kind of influenced the, in, influencing the trading decision, or is it about something that's about the trading decision? And a very helpful thing is to get a list of emotion words. Um, the rethink group belong um, uses the blue check wheel as his kind of guiding principle for. Um, emotions or, or way to put emotional words and kind of contextual things around emotions. So printing out a blue check wheel, printing out words. Um, uh, Lisa Feldman Barrett talks about emotional granularity and emotional differentiation. And so basically what it means is the more words that we know about emotions, the better we are at connecting the right word. And what that does is emotions have energy. And when we connect the right word to the emotion, the energy dissipates. I know that's a lot I just kind of went through, um, but does, did that answer your question? Yeah, you know, and there's a lot of helpful uh, pointers that you put out there. I think everyone should do. In fact, I'm going to apply them right away as well. You know, this is, yeah. this is, this is important stuff. You know, you're, you're, you're one of the top in your field. I got, you know what I mean? It's got to take the, got to put it in action now. Um, so, so John, what, what drives you to help others in this field? You know? 
Well, yeah, I mean, you can tell I get excited about this stuff. I just love it so much. A couple of things. One, I get to apply the knowledge that I learned over the last basically half of my life trading. Um, and I get to help other people with that in a way. Um, I spent, you know, the first half of my life competing with people uh, on the, well, 17 years on the trading floor competing and gutting it out and grinding it out. And now I get to help people. Not only that, but what we do is we actually help people expand their possibilities. And that's what I really love. The stuff we do, yes, it's great for trading. It's super helpful. It definitely works in trading, but it also is applicable to all parts of our lives. And a couple of things I noticed specifically for myself when I started really understanding this stuff is one, the chatter in my mind went way down, way down. Because once we're able to say, what am I really feeling? That chatter doesn't, it's not necessary anymore because we can say, oh, I'm really feeling anxious about this trade or I'm really feeling um, angry that I got stopped out and then it turned around and went my way. And so when we're able to do that, at least for me, the, the voice that was always um, saying you did it wrong was able to relax a little bit. And so being able to give that to other people being able to see other people break through some barriers that they've had for a while and being a part of that, really being a, a, a tool in that process for them. Really what we do, what I do is help my clients understand what they kind of know already and help them see it. So they're able to, like I said, expand what they're doing. That's the really exciting part for me. And not only that, I learned so much from my clients in so many different ways. It's just, it's expanded my worldview as well. And so that's, what's really exciting. Awesome. And uh, yeah, to start to wrap it up. Uh, so one, one more question. So what's your favorite part about being in the, like the wall street community? You know, I love trading. I love thinking about trading. I love reading about trading. I love everything about trading. I love the technicals. I love the fundamentals. To me, the most exciting thing is this idea. When it goes well, it feels like financial alchemy. We kind of have this idea. We do this thing and it makes money. It feels magical. Now, it's, it's not. It's much more complex than that. But I really love that. And also, it's a way for me to kind of feed my intuitive feel um, and grow that aspect of myself. Um, which I think helps me in all aspects of my life. That's awesome. And you mentioned reading. So, so any any books, uh, any recommendations? I know Denny Schultz, Market Mind Games for sure is absolutely. Top one. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a top one. I I read lots and lots of books. Um, trading specific books. Uh, obviously, I don't know if it's obvious, but um, the uh, Market Wizards are great. Um, the dog and the wolf, whatever that one is, was uh -huh. good. Um, Fooled by Randomness, I think, is an absolute masterpiece uh -huh. and must re read. Um, that's the scene to love. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's good. that's a great book. Um, I liked Shelley Natenberg's options book, Options, Volatility and Pricing Strategies. Uh -huh. uh, but it's a little nerdy, but I loved it. Um, and then, you know, uh, um, I read, I read all sorts of books. Um, yeah, <laughs> those are yeah. the top ones. I'm looking over here at my bookshelf for some other ones. Um, but, uh, permission oh. to feel is pretty good. Permission to feel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Against the gods, kind of the it's a story of risk. Again, kind of nerdy, but I loved it. <laughs> no, good so stuff. I, again, I could go on and on. I'll stop. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah. So I'll, I'll have those in the notes. I always like to put a couple few books in there, and I'm gonna get them myself <laughs> on Beautiful. audio. Yeah, if they have it on audio, for sure. Um, great, John. Well, well, thank you for coming on and taking the time. This is this is awesome. Um, yeah. I'm sure, everyone's gonna get a lot of value. So uh, from this, so like, uh, where can people find you? So at the Rethink Group, um, 
it's the rethink group.net, but, um, but they can send me an email or whatever. JPB at the rethink group.net is my email address. I do Twitter a little bit. I'm kind of, I'm hot and cold with Twitter, but uh -huh. my Twitter address is uh, JPBJR800, kind of okay. a an homage to my badge and, and uh, clearinghouse number. So, ah, okay, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Great. Well, John, enjoy. I, uh, I don't know for, if it's for you, but I have the day off, I guess. The market's closed. Yep. But uh, enjoy the long weekend or whatever, you. you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and we'll keep in contact. And thanks for... Take it that time once again. Thanks, right, John. I'll Feel see you. Feel free to Bye. reach out. Feel free for your for your listeners to reach out. I'm happy to help in any way I can. Absolutely. All right. Bye, John. Thank you.